In the annals of astronomical exploration, the advent of telescopes marked a significant turning point, opening a new era in observational astronomy. With the introduction of large operatives that allowed for the collection of an unprecedented amount of light, previously inaccessible cosmic bodies began to reveal themselves. These included small celestial bodies that had been obscured by their minuscule size. Immediately, new cosmic bodies were detected, and features of known objects were examined with great detail. Among the first of these discoveries were the four largest satellites of Jupiter, which were unveiled almost immediately. The phases of Venus, the intricate rings of Saturn, and numerous other celestial bodies were also examined and studied with increased scrutiny. In 1771, the Italian astronomer Giovanni Cassini, using a telescope that had already gained considerable fame, observed Saturn and its giant satellite Titan. It was during this observation that he discovered another moon, which he named Iapetus, after the titanium from ancient Greek mythology. Cassini made many other discoveries regarding Saturn, including the discovery of new satellites. However, Yapet turned out to be one of the most unusual celestial bodies ever discovered. Initially, Yapet was discovered on the western side of Saturn, but when, after some time, Cassini attempted to find it on the eastern side, the companion was not there. The satellite remained invisible for decades until Cassini, using a significantly modernized telescope, finally managed to locate it again. However, two stellar values were faster than he looked on the western side of Saturn, a fascinating observation that marked the beginning of the unravelling of the mystery of Yapet, the most mysterious satellite of our solar system. Compared to the ground, even the moon, Yapet seems small and insignificant, yet it remains one of the few bodies in the solar system with a diameter of more than 1,000 kilometres the third largest satellites of Saturn, and possibly one of the most studied in our solar system. Today we have a wealth of technological achievements that Cassini could only dream of. Modern telescopes are many times superior to the greatest instruments of his time, allowing us to observe in the ranges of Deleen waves that are invisible to the human eye. Many spacecraft, such as the Cassini mission, have travelled to distant worlds receiving images directly on the spot. Saturn, like the other gas giants in our solar system, has a unique and vast system, consisting mainly of satellites and rings. The main rings are certainly the most noticeable feature, containing many small satellites. Outside the main ring, Saturn has at its disposal eight large, noticeable objects. These include Mimas, Enceladus, Tethys, Dion, Rhea, Titan, Hyperion, and our today's hero, Iapetus. Of these eight satellites, Iapetus is not only the most remote, but also stands out in three unique features. The first feature is that Iapetus does not rotate in the same plane as the rest of the Saturn system. Saturn is the second largest planet in the solar system making a complete revolution around its axis in just 10.7 hours. The Saturn rings rotate in the same plane and consist almost exclusively of introduced ice. Of the eight above-mentioned satellites of Saturn, seven rotate within the same holes 610 degrees from the same plane. Only Iapet dares to tilt by more than half a degree. The second feature is that Iapetus has a Malnus-formed equator, it is elongated with a diameter of 1492 kilometers on the equator compared to 1424 kilometers from pole to pole. This would correspond to hydrostatic equilibrium if Iapet rotated at a full 360 degrees every about 16 hours. However, Iapet is tidally locked by Saturn, taking one revolution in only 79 days. The third feature is that Iapetus is dichromatic with one hemisphere being extremely dark and reddish, while the other is snow-white and covered with various volatile ice. This two-tone appearance is due to the presence of a large, low-mass ring of matter, 
that extends at a distance of almost 100 million kilometers, a little less than the distance from the Earth to the Sun. This matter is not visible in the optical range but was discovered only thanks to our infrared space telescope, which could consider the radiation emitted by dust on the tough sun. The matter in this external vest comes from another major world of the Saturn system, the captured companion of Phoebe, which rotates almost completely in the opposite direction to the rotation of Saturn. The reason for the existence of this external vest which is external with dust, is entirely illogical. It simply comes from another major world of the Saturn system, the captured companion of Phoebe, which rotates almost completely in the opposite direction to the rotation of Saturn. It seems that the appearance of Phoebe and her counter-rotation can only be explained by the fact that it arose from the external solar system outside the place where gas giants are located. The ice body emits volatile substances when exposed to sunlight and is now considered the main cause of the two-tone appearance of Iapetus. But what's the point? There are two options, simple and complex. A simple but hardly right option is that Phoebe is spewing particles which settle on one side of Iapetus and therefore it always has two different colours. A more complex and most likely, the likely option is that Phoebe emits particles that form a stream, and Iapetus crashes into this particle stream. When exposed to direct sunlight, the side of Iapetus without these particles of Phoebe retains less heat, while the side with these particles absorbs more heat, and therefore the ice on a hotter part is more likely to sublime, while ice volatile substances evaporate from a colder side, leaving only volatile particles behind, which better absorb heat. This is a generally accepted explanation for why Iapetus has such a two-tone nature. But considering the rest of Iapetus, one can see several other remarkable features, although not quite ordinary for the solar system. For example, the surfaces of the Osi Iapetus on craters, where a small number of large and ancient craters lie beneath more abundant and fresh craters. It is also rich in a darker material occupying a low-powered part of the satellite, while volatile ice covers a strongly inclined area. In addition, the side facing the sun has a continuous equatorial ridge, while the opposite side has only a few partial bright mountains, separated by more plain areas. If we collect all these facts together, and also add the basic properties of a satellite such as its density, we can build a scenario that will not necessarily be 100% true, and certainly not generally accepted, but which will give a believable explanation of how Iapetus appeared. In the earliest days of the existence of the solar system, the protosolar disk heated, while instability was formed. The largest early two instability outgrew into truly giant measures, Jupiter and Saturn, and all gas giants developed near-planetary disks. Each of these disks broke up into pieces, forming a number of satellites located in the same plane, and one of these was Iapetus, which perhaps was formed as a result of early massive tuning in the young Saturn system, or was thrown out by Saturn's solidness, gravitational interactions. The Iapetus of the eight main satellites of Saturn becomes the only one, from the surface of which the system of rings is visible. In the early days of this system, Iapetus quickly rotated, which led to its oblateness. It quickly hardened, while large strokes created five of its largest craters and lifted the all tides. Part of this debris could form a ring or satellite, which was steeply divided into disks, which then fell again on the surface of Iapetus, forming the equatorial ridge while the satellite became convex. Over time, as Phoebe was captured, a small amount of its debris with dust of flying substances sank into the leading hemisphere of Iapetus, 
forcing ice to sublimate and postpone the dark material. During the remaining part of the history of the solar system, its ice deposits dropped on the driven hemisphere, as a result of which dark material accumulates on the leading side. To date, its thickness is about 25-30 centimetres. That's something like that. Despite how promising this scenario is, there is currently enough information to confirm it or refute it. The equatorial ridges could be convex if the Iapetus bark froze in the early stages of formation and the ridge was formed from ice material, which rose and hardened. As an alternative, a large amount of aluminum-26 could be trapped inside the satellite, heating the Iapetus and creating these features. And based on the fact that there are no bodies in the plane of Saturn further than Iapetus, there is an assumption, although it is not welcome, that this is actually a captured body. It is three tons not blotted. Well, the main thing is that in science, it is important to maintain two conflicting thought processes at the same time. On the one hand, you need to consider a complete set of observed phenomena and properties of the entire trace of the system and take a position that most fully explains everything that you see, without any conflicts that may interfere. And on the other hand, it is necessary to consider every adequate explanation that is allowed, leaving your mind open to revise each aspect, if the new and the best data forces it to do this. So in 2025, we will go to 350 years after the opening of Iapetus, we still cannot decisively explain and solve its secrets. Two-tone Iapetus still remains with the strangest famous companion throughout the solar system.